guys, since the Carthage back, we have another Roman Invasion video. This time it's Carthage. Um, I previously recorded it, but it was way too long. So I'm um, just trying to shorten this one. So basically I have four units of um, uh, bronze, three bronze chevron, gold gold, uh, Iberian infantry, three gold attack slingers, no, two um, gold attack slingers, and four gold attack bronze defense slingers. And then we have uh, two units of gold gold Libyan spearmen, uh, four units of gold gold Polini infantry, and um, two units, um, oops, okay. yeah, that's good. Uh, the Romans have four units of gold, gold legionary cohorts, uh, four gold attack light auxilia, one legionary first cohort gold, gold, and one ballistae, which is gold, um, um, not gold, um, I should say three bronze chevrons. So, uh, the way I deployed is with, um, uh, my slingers on the walls. Um, I thought I could hold them with my slingers, but I couldn't. Um, I don't know, I think it was a bug, I forgot that, uh, you can't really fire slings off walls. So basically what I have here is all my slingers are on the walls, and, uh, I have four, one, two, three, and four pony infantry guarding all entrances, except this back one, which I doubt they're gonna come through. Um, my four Iberians are like this, and my two Libyans are like this. Um, alright, so, um, immediately his bullet stage just started. Tearing up my gate, but um, this is alright. So basically, what I'm doing is uh, flinging my slings. Um, so uh, since this is the Roman invasion, uh, like series, I'm gonna give them um, some information about how Roma attacked all these different factions. So basically, um, Carthage was probably Rome's greatest nemesis, to be honest. Yet yeah, this was the only group that actually. Um, Got some slings on. Okay, so the light auxiliary are gonna get killed here a lot, and uh, these guys uh, here are gonna get murdered as well. So basically, uh, Carthage um, was dominantly at sea. The first Punic War was basically a bunch of sea battles, but uh, uh, the Roman invention of the Corvus, which was like a boarding platform, uh, really killed the Carthaginian uh, naval power. Because the sailors were trained in navigation and all this like sea combat. But they never really faced an enemy that would come onto their wall, um, their own ship and destroy them from there, so they were unaccustomed to it and because of that they probably fell in the first Punic War. Um, after that, Carthaginian trade declined, um, Numidia, its longtime ally, kind of got scared of uh, what might happen if they supported uh, Carthage any longer. But uh, they, they kept support. And then during the Second Punic War, which probably was the, fam the famous out of the three, um, Hannibal Barca, um, legend, um, on my um, kind of like uh, leaders list, he'd probably be number ten out of uh, like a thousand. But um, uh, out of ten people, he'd probably be my number two. Um, only person beating him would probably be uh, Alexander because uh, Alexander just won more victories and he didn't really lose. Um, even with smaller numbers, um, he still won. But then again, um, Hannibal was facing the greatest military power at the time. Uh, but so was Alexander, so it's hard to say who's better. Uh, right now, what I'm doing, since these guys got on the walls, I decided to withdraw all my slingers to my uh, town square. So, uh, Second Punic War, Hannibal Barca, um, he comes from the Spain, um, he attacks the, the settlement, ready to take the town. and uh, the, whatchamacallit, the Romans didn't want that, but we didn't listen, um, the Carthaginians at least didn't listen to them, so uh, the Romans declared war again, and uh, that, that was kind of the start of the Second Punic War, so uh, Hannibal basically, what he did during that whole time, um, it was the uh, first battle, which was at Tresemme, after directly crossing the Alps. Um, I guess Hannibal was a little pissed off, because uh, he lost all his siege, siege equipment, and uh, he, he couldn't really take Rome anymore, um, which was his initial goal. 
let's just go in here and have like ballistas hit us and see what happens. Oh. But um, so, so that was basically um, a lot of reasons uh, why we roam. Um, ooh, that would hurt. But uh, so Trebia was kind of a, uh, did I say trust me before? If I did, I'm sorry. Um, it was the battle of uh, Trebia. So he hit his Numidian cavalry and basically all his cavalry and just um, ambushed them and flanked them and the Romans were scared as hell. And uh, that was their first taste of like a really bitter defeat since fighting the Samnite wars. Um, so it was kind of a rare occurrence for them to lose that bad. But uh, the Romans, as usual, they don't really take foreign people as a threat because uh, they're kind of conceited. Um, they think they're the best. Um, I, I kind of don't blame them because they're probably one of the greatest civilizations of all time. But still, um, that's not a right to be a uh, kind of cocky. So because they didn't take them that seriously, Hannibal had advantage, and uh, no, the Romans just sent one of their dinky little forces, um, uh, twenty thousand, to deal with uh, Hannibal and his so-called um, invasion of Rome. Because um, they knew what he was going for. But then Hannibal um, found a perfect spot to ambush them, which was at Tresemme. Um, the lake was to the Romans' right, I believe, and then they were walking down like a, like a passage like this, like, so the water's on the left side and the right side is on um, kind of a cliffs, or the other way around. So, uh, the Carthaginians came down upon them from the cliffs and they freaked out and they just ran right into the water. Like, they had nowhere else to go. It was either water or die, so most of them drowned. And that was basically Tresemme. And after that, um, they really took Carthage seriously, they, they were really pissed about it, they were really scared. So they sent a ginormous strike force of 80,000, um, 80, the largest ever assembled by Rome, um, to face a foreign threat. I mean, it was ginormous, like, these, um, like, tons of Hestadii, a few Principes there, here and there, and some Chirarii, a lot of Velites, some Equites, some crazy amount, but, um, in the end, Hannibal used, like, an, um, if you look in your keyboard, um, the left parenthesis was, um, excuse me, the right parenthesis is what his initial formation looked like, and um, after that, um, his formation ended up, he, um, he started falling back and back, filling just a bit, and then um, his formation ended up looking like the um, left parenthesis key. And uh, after he got it that way, I don't know, um, in the streets if you do this, then if you try and move, they come out of formation, which was pissing me off, so I kind of just left it. But uh, so basically, that's what happened, the Romans got lured and they were so thirsty for blood and vengeance that uh, they weren't really paying attention to what was happening like how it was right here. Um, these light auxiliary came around and they got killed. But uh, so basically, they died because uh, they, didn't, um, they got surrounded by reserves and uh, the cavalry that Hannibal used to um, take out the Roman cavalry. So that's basically the Punic War, sum uh, the second Punic War summed up in like three battles, but probably the most famous because of uh, Roman and Greek text was the Battle of Zama, which uh, Cornelius Publius Scipio or Scipio Africanus, whichever you prefer, became uh, infamous for, uh, for the country, Car uh, sorry I can't speak, Carthaginians and a hero to the Romans was because um, he finally convinced Rome the best all, all like defense was offense and uh, ended up going right to Carthage and Carthage was basically undefended so uh, Hannibal raced back um, when he heard the news um, he had spies in Rome and he heard about it and uh, he just ran back like, he forced his whole army back but um, once you cross the Alps your men definitely do not want to cross again but they had to so he lost a lot of men in that crossing and he was thinking of just staying there and um kind of um, being like a guerrilla force after that because he had no people left but um, he promised his father he would never give Romans space to breathe so he went back um, and uh, because he had no one left his elite Spanish cavalry his Gallic and um, Iberian allies they were all dead or um, they weren't willing to fight so he didn't force them and but then they deserted and they end up losing because of that 
And Third Punic War was basically just Rome sieging out Carthage for a couple of years until Carthage finally finally fell, and that's where the um, secret band kind of became infamous. Um, pretend this was an awesome Temple of Ball, which is in this game. Um, they had a last stand there when uh, Carthage was burning. Um, it's one of the most unfamous last stands, but um, you know when you're a Carthage freak like me, you, you figure it out. Um, so what they basically did was, okay, picture an awesome Temple of Ball if you've ever played campaign, you know it's like, and picture an awesomer than awesome Temple of Ball. So basically, the city barracks over here, the town plaza, and the governor's palace combined as one. That was basically the size of um, the awesome, uh, awesomer than awesome Temple of Ball. So they had a last stand around inside of it, and that was pretty much, um, Oh, they can walk on walls, that's pretty cool. That's pretty much the most important stand of this dude. Love Carthage. But sadly, Carthage was taken in the end, and that was basically um, the end of Carthage and uh, supremacy. Uh, it kinda ended after the Second Punic War. But uh, that was the end of Carthage, and the greatest empire in history um, in North Africa, in my opinion, was finally wiped out. So sad. Um, what I'm basically doing, okay, sorry if I haven't really been focusing on the action, I just want to squeeze in some history real quick. But, uh, so we have, uh, 20, I mean, 32 and 66 Light Auxilia marching up here. Um, we have these Legionnaires, which are being hard to kill, I don't know why, these pikes should be doing some damage. But, they're being, uh, annoying, and we can't really kill them right now. You know, we're actually, actually getting flanked by these guys, but my Spearmen, I put them in. Um, to kind of help uh, defend our point. So it looks like they're preparing. No, no, they're still marching. They're still marching. I wonder if they throw. No, it looks like they're just gonna walk right into battle. Um, so I took my uh, Poini over here, and I put it over here. And I put all my Slingers over here, and we killed like nobody yet. Um, I don't know what happened, I told everyone to run away, but this one unit just started moving. And I noticed they're fighting, and I was really confused at what they were doing. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know why, I, I put that command out pretty early, and these guys just started moving, and that really pissed me off. But I told everyone just to run away, but I don't know what happened, I'm pretty sure something went wrong, because these guys are facing the wrong way, and they're not even moving. They're just standing there. Yeah, now they routed at like 52 people. So they finally just run away, I guess. No, um, I let these Pawini kind of act as a barrier, and right when these guys, they just run right into the pikes. Yeah, they're just running right onto. Um, if I haven't mentioned the commanders now, I will. The House of Scipio is commanded by Captain Lucius, and I am kind of commanding Captain Hamilcar, so that's pretty much it. And these slingers are just going back, um, we're trying to get them up the middle. So 24 and 34 are running away, um, we also have 26 coming over here. Um, my Libyans finally get to flank these Legionnaires, um, long time uh, before that happened, I don't know why. So basically they retreat, um, these guys um, start coming back, I'm pretty sure I can deal with them. Basically, just kill. oh, ow. stabbed them in the head. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I didn't mention this, but in the end, I ended up just fighting these guys because I don't know what happened. I think something's wrong, but they're just marooned on this wall. They don't get down. I mean, like you go down these towns, and these guys are just just can't get in. <laughs> like they go in and then they go. Uh, these guys are. Can't really do anything anymore, so it's just best. It's like, um, fast forward this. Here, I'm just gonna fast forward this real quick. So basically, all that's really happening is Light Exilia charging. Um, they're being soundly defeated. And they're getting shot, they're, like shot down. Oh, this really hurts. Ooh. Um, yeah, and these are not like um little rocks they're chucking at you. They're throwing balls of lead. Um, or really any other like metal or like wooden balls um, at you and I'm pretty sure if you got one lodged in your head you would die immediately. Um, the 
force behind it is just too much for your head to handle. Um, it's really dangerous to um, get a uh, slingshot someone. Even like with the Y-shaped slingshots we have today, um, that was pretty dangerous too. Um, I actually normally use a sling um, during camp. We actually, I actually made one. I was kind of reenacting him with power, and I hit a tree, and it went literally halfway into the tree, and I was like, oh damn. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm seeing that they're coming through the walls finally, the gate, whatever, and, um, I don't know, it's kind of funny that, um, so, um, I line up here and I'm just having my slingers take pot shots, but I don't understand why they're not killing any of them, because they're shooting point blank range and no one's dead, and, uh, this is kind of odd. So I'm just gonna fast forward this, and uh, uh, I gotta go for one second. <laughs> we are back. Um, I guess you guys can watch this in uh, double time. So if you guys wanna watch this, I'll go in double time. Right, I'll just be right back. Okay guys, sorry about that, but uh, what you basically saw was um, my slingers were getting attacked so I just decided to uh, um, just surround them and then I got these Iberians over here um, to come over and help assist and these slingers that like, routed them, um, they came back. Oh my god, they're crazy. So right now they're pretty much surrounded, um, hopefully I didn't miss, yes, all, right, all three officers are about to die at the same time. Centurion gets hit in the back by my captain. Standard bearer. Where is he? Is he dead already? Oh man, that was kind of sad. Oh, he's right there, he's right there. Yes, there you go. So, and then standard bearer walks into the wrong spot, he gets stabbed in the butt. And the Roman commander is about to get killed by Slender. Ooh, face slash. It looks like um he took the sling and he took the ball in it and just hit the person in the face. It's pretty funny. Uh, so these Iberians, um, I actually caught um, these guys, so I decided to bring them out of the walls. And yes, celebrate my friends. They've deserved it. But um, now we have to deal with this, these guys, and this is where it starts to get ridiculous, so I'm just going to fast forward it. So my main goal was to um, actually knock out these uh, ballistas, and I did for a moment. Um, I had a theory um, in my first siege against, uh, I was at SPQR and I was against uh, Spain. I had a theory because one of my urban cohorts got hit in the head by a catapult after we destroy it, um, an onager, so, um, by like the little arm. So I was wondering, and I was just curious, um, I want to show you what happens. So I'm, I'm attacking this um, ballista here, and I was curious to see if um, my guys would die at all. So look at the number I have, uh, 77, and look what happens after I destroy it. Right there. Four people just died. And I was like, what the hell? That kind of really pissed me off. So after this, um, I sent a little smaller team. And same results, I lost three people. So now I'm down to 70 people. And I see these guys regrouped, and I was going to go and take them out, but then I realized that they were over here. I don't know why I was running them. I should have just come down. But I ended up charging them, and I pretty much killed them, and I ignored them for a sec. And what happens? They come back. I don't know what I was doing back here. Those are my slingers. Yeah, those are my slingers. Um, I tried to get my slingers to attack them, but they just went cuckoo, so I just left them. And then I'm charging again. And this time, they stay gone. Which I was kind of happy about. Wait, actually, no. No, 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 no. They leave. They really leave. Um, so I was just kind of watching them. And then they finally leave. So I was like, alright. So I just rest them for a little bit, and these guys are still on psycho mode. So what they're basically doing is just marching uh, towards the wall. I'm gonna rest them up a bit on the wall. 
Um, I thought this one unit of 70 could easily take care of these guys, but then again they have 81 and their cohorts. So, um, I was kind of skeptical about this. I wish there was a bunch of speed. So, uh, basically right now, I'm just waiting, I guess. Oh, sorry, I'm tired. Um, so they're basically just going. My Iberians all by themselves. They're waiting by the ladders. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the background is my grave. Uh, so... These guys are still shifting like crazy. Damn, this really nice. And uh, if you haven't noticed already, I have this elaborate display of Carthaginian elegance in the back. I got my four small units. I got uh, one bigger unit and another bigger unit. All my singers lined up like that. And three of my Iberians. <coughs> so I'm kind of just waiting right now. They climb Alright, finally. They got on the walls and I thought they would be able to take them out, but they can't. They are just being decimated really quickly. Um, so they killed like one guy and they killed like almost half of my guys. At this point I start to worry. Um, and they start fighting to the death on the wall. So I send over my three, um, kind of depleted units. And I put them to the other side, and, um, I thought this might do it, but, um, it was the exact opposite of what I thought would happen right there. Instead, we kind of just got buttered from both sides, which was kind of bad. So, even though they were flanked, all my forces just went crazy, and they all started fighting to the death. And this really pissed me off. Um, because I had faith. Now I'm sending my big unit of untouched Poeni infantry that were sitting over here. And I'm sending my Libyan spears as well as um, my uh, Poeni infantry. But then I hear, I um, kind of think about Carthaginian elegance. And uh, I'm like, no, this is a whole unit. I'm not sacrificing them, so I just bring them back. Yeah, they're going back. They're not going to be touched. I want a full unit. So yeah, they're just epic failing and they're just going in through both sides. Um, that's kind of unnecessary. But they're actually just marching up like that. And there they go. And then into the flames they go. Um, we had Libyan Spears here and uh, I was kind of thinking about putting them all to one side but then I was like why not just flank them. So what I did was take out all my men over here and uh, I put them on this section of the wall and uh, through this tower. It's kind of funny though how if a tower is uh, damaged, like uh, completely destroyed, um, you can still go through it. I find that funny. Um, so you can go inside of a destroyed tower. Yes. So yeah, you can see all these dead Iberians over here, and then you can see um, all these dead. Uh... Oh yeah, um, there's someone who ran off. Yeah, this guy just. Um, I don't know if he saw it or not. He just actually ran off the edge like suicidally. That was a little dis discerning, but whatever. So I'm just keep letting everyone get up. So when they're all up, I just run them. And this guy gets a surprise attack. This guy's like a total beast, but then sadly, he kills like crazy. Look at this guy. This guy's like a beast. This guy's an absolute beast. But sadly, no one lasts forever, and he falls off, and he dies pretty I remember you, wait, let's see. I wanna see his body. Oh, I see him. I saw him. Hey, guy. He's right there. Oh, um, but we finally get some pressure off of five other guys, and, uh... Yeah, we make it this time. This unit is dwindling really quickly. I don't really have much guys left. 
Um, they're getting squeezed together. This is probably, probably the last CPI they will ever step forward into Carthage until Skippy Alphapinus comes along and fix their butts. I guess I'll play this in real time for the last four, three, two, one. Hi ya, backstab! And pikes the look like spears on walls, in case you're wondering. The enemy Yay, are we did crushed. it. Um, but it's kind of embarrassing comparing um, the number we had. But uh, then again, we had Iberians and no offense. They're not that great. Um, you guys can do this stuff if you want. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. The next one shall be Dacia, and I'll see you guys then.